Hello and good afternoon. Welcome to Lincoln Center's pop-up classroom and thank you for joining me for this drawing workshop today. Um, I know you've been doing a lot of watching of these programs and I hope that you were making a remote control with Deb's choreographic workshop yesterday. I watched that, I thought it was so much fun and I really wanna make one of those and definitely do all those different types of turning and jumping and making it bigger, making it smaller. I really, really enjoyed that workshop. I hope you did too. So if you have been enjoying these workshops, um, I'm hoping that you're gonna share this workshop to other friends, to other parents, to uh, parent groups, to teachers, teacher to teacher. If you've been watching and you think another teacher you know would be interested, I hope you'll share it with them. And of course, um, if you're an artist and you'd like to draw, then you might just enjoy, if you're flipping through your Facebook feed, uh, to stick around and do this with us today. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be drawing from observation cityscapes. And um, I've got some special uh, stuff that we're gonna do to warm up and get ready. Uh, but first of all, let me reveal the materials that you're gonna need for today. You're gonna need some white paper that's about eight and a half by 11. You're going to want to gather, uh, there are about three sheets, I think. Then you'll have like two that you're going to be working on and one sort of extra one, just in case you need it. Um, you're going to also want to have some black drawing implements. And by that, I mean, I've got a Sharpie marker, a black one. I've got a little pen, very fine, and I've got a pencil. And those three tools will be plenty. If you have two that will also work, one will also work. So find something black to draw with on your eight and a half by 11 inch paper. Let me put this aside over here. Okay, so we're gonna begin thinking about a warm up activity. And the warm up has to do with making all different types of lines and kind of getting our um, drawing vocabulary of lines all together. So what we're gonna be doing is um, going with this warm up, sort of all different line types. And then after we've done that, we're going to go on to a shape by shape drawing, what we call blocking in of a particular photograph that I've selected. And then finally, we're gonna fill those shapes that we have blocked out with the different types of warm up lines that we're gonna be creating in this warm up. So all the different types of lines that you can think of. So um, we're gonna be doing this warm up in four fast minutes. We're gonna be doing some drawing timing challenges. And what I mean by that is when we have a limited amount of time, it gets us really going quickly, making snap decisions. Um, and anything that you come up with using your three drawing tools will be absolutely great. I wanna say one more thing about our warm up before we get going. We're gonna be thinking about these three ideas, which is we're gonna be working with straight and curved lines. We're gonna be thinking about lines that are long and lines that are short. And we're also gonna be thinking about lines that are dark and lines that are light. So I will make some conversation around these three ideas and some suggestions as you go. Uh, Curtis, could you put up our four minute timer? Get your drawing supplies ready. Get your white piece of paper ready. This is just the warm up, nothing to worry about. So here we go. I'm gonna start with some straight lines and I'm gonna see the different weights of the lines that I have. Some are thick, some are thin. So I can use a pencil from the side, here I go. I'm going to now think about some short lines because those first ones were quite long. And I'm gonna do like a dotted line. I'm also gonna do some lines in different directions. This is called cross hatching, a line like that. Um, let's see, what else am I gonna do? I'm gonna think about um, just the idea of lines that are all in a row, maybe getting smaller as they go. I'm just messing around. I'm not worried at all. I'm now gonna move on to curved. I started with a big spiral and maybe an arc. I'm gonna to switch to another tool and maybe I'm gonna go some loopy. And maybe some wave-like scallops. 
I'm not making a picture yet. I'm really just experimenting with different types of lines. Sometimes I have to look back to see all the different lines I came up with. Oh, and now I'm just going to do a oh, kind of wild line that's just going all over my paper. Like that. And now I'm really going to think about dark and light. And if I like something very much and it's kind of light, I might want to just switch to dark and add some of that to it. And I definitely like this one. I can't exactly see the timer. So I'm not sure where I am with my four minutes. I'm wondering if anybody could give me a little signal. I'm halfway done. That's good to know. I hope you've got some long lines, some short lines, some straight ones, some curved ones, some very dark, some very light. You know, the dark, making them dark, you can do it with any of your tools. This I call a back and forth line. And look, it's really good for filling in spaces. Like that. So as you're working, you probably have some favorites, some lines that you just like more than others. And you can continue to develop those any way that you like. I'm making like a checkerboard now, tic-tac-toe. And now I'm going to try a tic-tac-toe that has diagonals in it, too. We usually call that cross-hatching in art making, in drawing. And the closer the lines get together, we call that dense. They get really, really tight, and it makes for a very dark area. Um, the further apart the lines are, of course, there's a lot more of the white paper showing through, and it makes it airier. So those are some of the variations that I can think of. Oh, I'm going to try some dots. That's when the line gets so tiny that you can't even call it a line. It's just like a little, little dot. So you've got just a little less than a minute left. So see if you can fill your page. I'm just going to make some little O's. That's what happens when a line touches itself. It turns into a shape. Cheerios. How are you doing? Are we close to done? So hold up your drawing. Show it to someone in your house if you can. I'm going to show you mine nice and close. So this is the material that we're really going to be thinking about um, as we do this next project. This project is going to involve a special photograph. And I'd like Curtis, if you wouldn't mind bringing up that photograph now. So this photograph happens to be of the plaza at Lincoln Center, and I'm going to pull it. And, um, oh, it's got so many interesting details to it. It's got a, a reflecting pool, and standing in that reflecting pool is a very favorite sculpture of mine by a man named Henry Moore. And I'm, this photograph is taken from like the second floor of David Geffen Hall, and we're looking across the plaza, across the reflecting pool, to um, Lincoln Center's Theater across the way, which is that big building with that long sort of rectangle. And on either side are all the other buildings that are on the campus of Lincoln Center. So we have the Metropolitan Opera, we have the Juilliard School, we have the Rose Building, there's lots of different things going on at Lincoln Center, including a fancy restaurant that is that little triangle shape that's sort of underneath that ramp. So what I'm gonna show you how to do is how to draw a scene that's really complicated like this. Because it's of the city, we call it a cityscape. So you're gonna need um, your other piece of white paper. And we're going to go shape by shape through this drawing. This is called blocking in. And this is a very essential step in making any kind of drawing. So here we go. 
So we're going to go to the next slide. And you're going to see that there's been a highlighted area that's very bright, and it's outlined in red. And that's what you're going to draw first on your white piece of paper. So I'm holding my paper horizontally because that will make it much easier for me to work. And I'm going to start with my big heavy marker so everyone can see it. And I'm going to put in that first rectangle. The building blocks of blocking in are the same geometric shapes that we've been talking about in a number of my programs. So it's these shapes that we're going to be looking for in the photograph. So we're going to move to the second image, and I'm just going to be going pretty swiftly through, and then we're going to start the timer, but not quite yet. So now we're going to add this rectangle that sits on top of that first long rectangle. It's a little bit uh, narrower, shorter, not as wide, um, and it's a little bit thicker, a little bit taller. So I'm going to draw that next. And it'll connect with the first one because we're going shape to shape to shape. They all share an edge. We call that tangent. We've done that before with shapes. And I'm going to move along to the next image. So in this image, what we've got is sort of the big uh, entrance to the theater. And we're going to put that in. It's also rectangular. And we're going to leave a little space where the sculpture is sticking up. Now the sculpture, um, because of the perspective, that deep space that we're looking at, it covers up part of the building. So we have to leave a little bit of space for that sculpture to fit in. And I'm just measuring where that might be. Something like this. Now drawing takes practice and, and um, you get better at it the more you do it. But this will give you a really great way of being able to draw anything you want from observation. So we're going to go to the next screen. And now this is really interesting because this reflecting pool, if you were standing at Lincoln Center's Plaza, you'd think, oh, that's a rectangle. But when you look at it in the photograph, it really is not. It's very wide in the front and it's quite narrow in the back. So. I know that that name has a shape. I mean, that shape has a name. And I think it is a, um, not a parallelogram. Oh, it's escaping my memory right now. I'm going to think about it as I draw. I'm just going to draw it the way that I see it. Those long diagonals. Like that. And I'm going to even start to draw the sculpture because that is in this particular slide. And let's see here. I love this sculpture and I've visited it many, many times. And every time I look at it, it strikes me differently. And it's striking me differently right now, looking at it with all of you. How are you doing so far? So this is what I've got. I'll hold it up for you this way. And I'm going to, I think that's pretty okay. So then I'm going to now give you a slide. This, I'm going to, going to be, this is going to begin our timing. Um, in the next slide, all of the main shapes in this photograph are going to be outlined in red. And you're going to have 15 minutes to do two things. One will be to draw as many of those shapes as you like. And then the other thing will be to fill in those shapes with any of these line types that you explored. So we're going to be doing two things at once. Now, for me, I like to draw all my shapes first and finish my blocking in. And then I like to do this. But you know, 15 minutes goes quickly, so you're gonna to wanna to keep your eye on the timer and see what you have time for. So we're gonna start our engines and enjoy the fun of drawing with a timer because it's a challenge. And there's so many you know, game shows that you only get like a couple of seconds and then the buzzer goes off. And I want you to think of it like that. It's just a game, all right? So here we go. We're going to take a look at the next image, and I want you to draw all the shapes that you can see. 
and you can start any way that you like. Now, as we draw, I just want you to know that I'm going to leave out all the many, many people that I see in this photograph. I'm gonna save that challenge for a very different day because drawing people is, is hard and there are too many of them and they're too tiny in this photograph. So I'm just not even gonna worry about it. And that's what I suggest for all of you. So I just was blocking in my trees and I just blocked in the Metropolitan um, Opera. And I see that there's another little rectangle there that I'm gonna put in underneath this. It goes to about there. Let's see what else. I'm going to now do this big building over here. You don't have to. You get to pick and choose what you wanna include in your drawing. And that's what makes all of our drawings different and very distinctive. So I don't want you to feel like, oh, Barbara's way ahead of me, I gotta catch up. You don't have to think like that at all. You get to pick how to go about doing what you're doing. And of course, the fun of any art making is that we all do things differently. The same things, even if we're all drawing, like what if we all gathered in the plaza at Lincoln Center and I said, oh, go find a nice place where you'd like to sit down and draw. Everyone's drawing would turn out distinctively their own. And you can see I've been practicing doing these drawings. They were on my wall behind me. So I think I've got my blocking in. I might do another little bit. I'm going to check the time. Where am I at with the time? Okay, I got to get a move on. All right, so I'm now going to move to my different line types, and I'm going to think about what I want to fill in here. And I'm going to definitely finish the sculpture first because that's so important to me. For me, it's one of the highlights of this plaza area. Shadow there. It's very dark down there. I'm drawing with my little pen right now, but you could pick whatever drawing tool you like the best. You know, sometimes you can draw the whole, do a whole drawing with the same tool and you just keep changing the characters of the lines in the same way that we were working in our warm up. Because different lines have different kind of personalities to them in a way. And, um, and that's part of the fun of having lots of different types of lines to choose from. I'm gonna fill in my trees with something kind of loopy and meandering. I'm gonna do it with pencil just for fun. They have some variety because I know that the pencil is much lighter than my marker. And you might think about what's light and what's dark and the tools that you've brought to this lesson, because that will also affect your results, what it looks like to you. And after I do all this kind of crazy mark making, I'm gonna put in some tree trunks. Noticing the trees are sort of acting like they're on a diagonal here. I can't see all of them, so I'm making some of them up. That's fine. You can do that too. I'm gonna put a tall tree in there. Another one. Maybe this is one with another tree like that. Something like that. Okay, now there are a lot, a lot of windows in this scene. And I'm gonna think about how I wanna do that. How do I wanna fill those windows in? Hmm. 
I always like this kind of back and forth for filling in dark areas. Um, and I'm just going to do it. I've done it this way before, I think, in one of the drawings that's probably on the wall behind me. Uh, I like this back and forth for making sort of a dark area. And I'm going to kind of do it on two diagonals. It's kind of like cross hatching. Then, I hope that everybody is now sort of feeling in your shapes. Because I think that we're just past one third of the way. You might notice that none of my tools have erasers. And um, that can be challenging for some people. But I like that challenge because it makes me think that whatever I do, that's going to swell. Just leave it. Just let it be, Barbara. And I'm often saying that to myself because we can be very um, hard on ourselves when we're trying to draw something from observation. And one of the first skills to develop is getting over that. I work on that all the time. Now, grown-ups. If you have something that you would like to add, I hope that you will be responding in the comments section. Um, I'm not able to look at my comments right now because all of my devices have been devoted to something else to make this program possible. So if you have something that you'd like to say, I have some colleagues at Lincoln Center and they'll be responding to you. And also reminding you of little things that might be helpful in the instructions that I gave. Maybe some of you grown-ups will be drawn too. I hope you're paying attention to that timer so you know how much time is left for your drawing. This thing that I'm doing right now with this tiny little marker, oh my gosh, this takes some time. I hope I'm not gonna regret that that like I used all my time on these windows. One of the great things about Lincoln Center is it gathers all the arts together. And so knowing that we're seeing this from our symphony hall, David Geffen Hall, where you can go hear the New York Philharmonic play, and we're looking out at the theater, we can go see a play. And we're also looking past a beautiful sculpture by Henry Moore, which is, of course, in the visual arts. So think about all that. We have theaters, we have places where you can go see ballet, where you can go see dance, we can go listen to opera. And this place, this, this plaza area is kind of like our garden. Um, and when I'm working at Lincoln Center, I often have lunch on a bench that sits right in front of those trees in the summertime. I love doing that. Let's see, I'm going to do some of the line work on the Metropolitan Opera building. I think that I'm blocking my drawing while I'm working on my drawing. I'm sorry about that. But you need not be watching me do this at all. I hope that you're just busy, busy, busy trying to draw from observation. because I know that the time is quickly passing. Hmm. I'm gonna put in this dark, I don't even know what this is. It looks like, it's like doors to a balcony. I've never noticed that. Isn't that funny how when you're drawing from observation, you notice things about a place that you're very familiar with that you might never have noticed before. And that has to do with how carefully you have to look at something when you are drawing it. I like that very much. All right, I'm gonna do another kind of back and forth. I think I'm gonna do it with my pencil over here because this is a very dramatic spot at Lincoln Center's Plaza. And that is this restaurant. Now I could, if I wanted to, fill in all of those umbrellas and things that I see in this big sort of triangular shape. But I don't want to do that today because I know that that's going to take way too much time. 
So I'm just going to fill it in in this kind of, I, I consider it like a, a dramatic shape that is in this photograph and I'm sort of going every which way with my drawing to fill that in. Back and forth, quickly moving. I like the sound my pencil makes. Can you hear your markers or pencils making sounds when you're drawing? I love that. That's kind of like the accompaniment, the musical accompaniment to working for the visual artists. Okay, let's see. Anything else I want to do? This is big and open. I'm going to put some water. You might want to do that. We have some interesting marks that we've already looked at. This is kind of cartoon water. Now we're on to five minutes left, a little bit less now. So I want you to be thinking about, ooh, two thirds of the way done. How am I gonna use my time? So I do the things I really wanna do. To finish up my drawing, to finish up your drawing. I'm just thinking of all the different things that we have done together in our pop-up classrooms. And it's such a pleasure to know that you're out there watching and thinking about art making and sculpture making and collaging and dancing and making music, making songs, listening to the sound in your bathroom and, and in your closet. I love that you're doing all of that with us. And my colleagues, all the different pop-up artists that you've been working with are extremely talented artists. And it's so great that we all have a chance to share our skills with all of you when we are being quarantined and stuck inside. Who knew that being stuck inside could be so entertaining? These are the openings that lead to the Rose Building. And I work on the seventh floor there. I'm not gonna be drawing all those windows. That's too many in the five minutes that I have. So I'm just gonna see if there are a couple of other things that I wanna do. I'm gonna make this shape dark because it's way in the distance. I'll make a little water over here. You know how water, like some, sometimes it just has like little bubbles. The fountain moves so beautifully. What, next time you go to the plaza area at Lincoln Center, I hope you'll really take a careful look at that fountain. So interesting. In fact, all of the architecture in this area is very, very striking, I think. Maybe I need some something here. Like maybe, hmm. I could be a trill here. Oh, like that, something like that, maybe. And I have some, oh, lots of little windows here. Maybe I'll make a little row of them. Windows and threes, I noticed. Uh oh. Something like that. Okay, we have one minute left. What are you gonna do with it? Oh, so many choices to make when you're drawing. And no choice is exactly, well, I was gonna say no choice is exactly perfect, but what I really mean is no choice is wrong. It's just all about choice. And every art making um, experience one has, has to do with how are you gonna use those choices. I think we should have a big buzzer sound at the end. Let's see, I'm gonna 
open more little windows here. Oh, I've hardly had a chance to see what I've done. I've been drawing as fast as I can. Okay, I think that that's it then. So we're gonna close up our markers and pencils and things. I'm gonna put mine aside and I'm gonna put my drawing types, my different types of lines, and I'm gonna put them aside. Um, let's just take a look at the whole plaza area without any of the red lines. And let's look at our drawings to see what we can find. Um, do you see any areas of your drawings that have straight line? Because that was one of the things that we were doing in our warm up, right? So see if you've got some straight lines and see if you've got some curved lines. I only have curved lines in a very few places. My trees are very curvy lines. And I used a few little sort of gentle curves in my sculpture of Henry Moore. But that's about it. Long lines and short lines. See if you can find in your drawing how you used long lines and short lines. This is one of my last lines and it was very long and skinny. And these lines are so short that they turned into dots. Where did you put your short lines? I'm wondering. Would this be better for everybody to see? I'm also looking at dark lines and light lines. Do you have dark lines and light lines in your drawing? It might have something to do with how much pressure you put behind your tool or how lightly you were drawing, or it might have to do with which tool you chose to do in which area. So like in my trees where I drew those in with pencil, I then used very dark lines and marker to make the tree trunks. So I'm wondering about your drawings and what you did. So again, there's no wrong way to do this. Did you get the whole plaza area in, or did you leave out some buildings because you didn't want to draw those? That's also a choice. Just like saying, I'm not gonna draw the people. So everything that you've done so far is a series of the choices that you made. Line types, looking at shapes, figuring out which ones were important to draw, which ones you could leave out. So I wanna show you something um, that connects with the drawing that we've just done, which is by an artist named Jennifer Bartlett. And she did a print for Lincoln Center. And I'm gonna show that to you in just a moment. It's from a series of, it's called Untitled. It's from a series of works that she made once one year, over 18 months, she was living in the South of France in Nice. And she had a view out a window at a garden. And I think the entire series is called In the Garden. So I want you to take a look at this image. Jesse, would you pull that up for me? Curtis, I'm so sorry. He's another one of my tech friends. So this is the image that Jennifer Bartlett made um, for uh, the Chamber Music Society of Lincoln Center. You can see it written right there. And we've just done a drawing that is similar to what she did on the top half of her work. And um, she drew it from observation. She did 200 drawings of this very same scene. Sometimes they were drawings, sometimes they were prints. This happens to be a print. Um, sometimes they were paintings. Sometimes they were collages. Sometimes they were photographs with drawing on top. She did many, many explorations of the same scene again and again and again. Um, and I think that that's so interesting to me that that was her project. And I thought that Lincoln Center's plaza was kind of related to her view, that she was looking from above, like we were from David Geffen Hall. She was looking out a window. She was looking across a reflecting pool with a sculpture in it. And you can see way in the distance, there is a little sculpture there. And there's a reflecting pool for sure. And then it's lined with trees. And we even have some trees in our um, drawing from Lincoln Center Plaza. So I thought that the scenes were quite related. What's interesting about what Jennifer Bartlett did is not only was she using different line quality, dark areas, 
and light areas. Can you see some of those in the top half of this picture? She was also using um, lots of lines together. We call that dense to make it really dark looking, right? And lines that were further apart that makes it look more airy and more uh, sparse looking. She did that. She also has thick lines and thin lines. And she also has straight lines and curvy lines. Some of those trees are, look like they're kind of um, fairy, fairy arms or something, something very light and airy. So then what she did was she created a partner image for it, and that's what is on the bottom. And I'm wondering if you notice how that bottom section, which is in color, is similar yet different from the top section. What are some of the ways that you would describe that? What makes it different? What makes it similar? If you've got some ideas about that, you might want to put that in the comments section. What makes it similar and what makes it different? Well, you're right. Just changing it and adding color makes it very different than what's on the top. Now this is in three colors, red, yellow, and blue. And you probably know if you've been taking art classes that we call those the primary colors because we can mix everything using those three colors. And there are also some very long lines, like the side of her reflecting pool, and some very short lines. It looks like she's just whipping her brush. I think this is painted. It seems to be going in many, many different directions. I think it's a screen print, actually. But it looks like it's taken with a kind of gesture that's like painting with a brush. And I'm especially fond of the top left-hand corner of the bottom section where she has made some trees and they are not the color that trees normally are. I really like that part. I wonder what part of this print you like in the colored section. What do you notice about it? How might you send me a message about what you're seeing? So the project that we did today was to just do the top half of this drawing. And I am hoping that you will add a bottom half to this drawing, like I did over here on the wall. I was working with some colored crayons that you can add water to, and then they turn sort of more like paint, which I enjoy doing a lot. I found it very challenging to just use three colors. You might want to take that challenge. Um, and I didn't time it. I just spent as much time doing it as I wanted. And so I'm going to invite you to do the same. But there'll be no picture for you to base your work on, except the first picture that you drew, the one that you've drawn today. You'll be using that as your kind of guide. Anyway, I hope that you will do that right after this program ends. I want to thank you so much for joining me, but I have a couple things to tell you. And that is, is that tomorrow you are going to be singing opera with Ashley Renee, which is, I think is so interesting that you're going to be doing that since we just drew where opera takes place at Lincoln Center. So that's going to be in the pop-up classroom tomorrow afternoon. I hope you'll join her there. I'm definitely going to join her. Um, and again, if you've enjoyed drawing and learning how to block in a cityscape, uh, first of all, I hope that you'll try it from maybe you're from your own window at what you see outside. And then I hope that you will tag a friend or tag someone that you think would really enjoy doing this and seeing this program. So thank you so much again for joining me. I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Signing off, it's Barbara Elman. Thanks a lot. Bye. Have a great afternoon.